You know, I was reading in the book of Mark today, and I wanted to share with you a story out of chapter one. And when I read it, even though I've read it many times before, I want to share it with you because I want to testify to you as to why God's word is enough. I want to testify to you as to why Jesus Christ is enough. You know, the Word of God never ceases to amaze me. And when I read this today, even though I've read this many times before, I always get welled up. It moves me, it moves my emotions. One of the things that I do when I read is I do allow my imagination to be in the moment of what I'm reading. And I know that might sound kind of weird. Some people just read the words and they move on. But when I read my emotions take over because, like I said, my imagination puts me right there in the event and I can't help but imagine what each party, in other words, all parties involved, must have felt what they witnessed or experienced. So the first thing I want to do is read this to you, and please bear with me because I I think this is just beautiful. So again, I'm in the book of Mark, chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, And they came to him from every quarter. Now again, as I finished reading this, I I had to wipe my eyes. And I realized, well, Drew, you're just a big baby. And yes, I am. Because the words of our holy God touch my heart and the actions and the goings-on of Jesus Christ always move me. I try to imagine this leper. Here is this leper who is all alone. He is stricken with a terrible disease which is rotting his flesh. He is despised by the public. He gets these looks, you can imagine, every day. People crossing to the other side of the road, they don't want to come near him. Leprosy is not only a hideous disease, it is a disease that leaves the individual leading a terrible life of loneliness. And so I imagine just the probable lack of hope he had in his life, suffering daily, in pain, physically and mentally. 
But then this leper begins to hear stories. He's hearing stories of a man who has suddenly come about who with one touch of his hand is healing people of all manner of diseases. And then he hears more stories and more stories. And I can imagine that this leper may have started to feel hope. And he decided to begin a journey to find this man who was healing people. Who knows how far of a journey he took to find this Jesus. And then trying to get close to him again while probably being treated poorly by anyone who would come near him. But as he made his way to Jesus, he came up to him and our Holy Word says that he kneeled down to Jesus, probably with his last ounce of energy and hope. And he asked Jesus, will you make me clean? And now all the focus shifts over to Jesus. And what does the word tell us? Well, Jesus looked upon this leper. Now this was a man that Jesus Christ himself had created. But he looked upon this man with compassion. And, it, and again, wiping my eyes blubbering because we all to a certain point although not as bad off as this leper maybe some of us we've all had these moments where we are crying out to Jesus for compassion for healing but here is this leper who's got it pretty bad off and he has utterly humbled himself in front of this man who he doesn't know at this point and he is desperate. But Jesus looks at him with compassion. And then Jesus puts forth his hand and he touches him, which may have made the crowds around him gasp. Is this man insane? He's touching a leper. But they watch. There may have been hundreds at this point. There may have been thousands. I don't know. But they're all watching this, this amazing man, Jesus Christ. And he speaks five words to him. He said, I will be thou clean. You try to imagine right now what that leper felt. We just don't know exactly, but we do know that the leprosy fell off of him. I can imagine him looking at his arms, looking at his legs, his torso, because this leprosy was more than likely covering his body. Perhaps he put his hands on his face and for the first time in years, he felt his face become smooth again his arms, his back, everything perfectly healed by Jesus Christ. Look at Jesus again, feeling the joy of healing his son, his creation, and then rejoicing again to see the once leper's joy as this terrible disease uh, departed from him. Now look at the crowds as they, in astonishment, saw this. There must have been wails and gasps as they witnessed firsthand this absolutely astonishing miracle. 
And again, I'm wiping my eyes because of the miracle of all this. And it is precious in my eyes. I also love the way that this story ends as Jesus charges him. He says, say nothing to any man. Now this is a little bit of humor because I think Jesus knew that this man whom he healed would not even approach anything close to being able to withhold his joy, his witness. And the Bible even tells us he went and began to publish it much. And I love these words, to blaze it abroad. And he caused a little trouble for Jesus because it says that uh, Jesus could no more openly enter into the city because obviously the people all around were telling other people and more and more crowds uh, were showing up and thronging Jesus to see these types of miracles and to witness this wonder filled or I should say these wonder filled uh, events so uh, it's absolutely amazing and, and I love it this this once leper could not keep his mouth shut his joy must have been overflowing to be made whole again from such a terrible and painful and lonely disease and so again my imagination takes in all the joy and all of the miracle of this one story and again this is just one story of thousands of stories like this in the bible but this is what the holy word of god does it fills us not only with the truth of these true events but we know or we can know as much as the Bible will allow us, as much as the Holy Spirit will allow us, these things that are written so we can have a glimpse and even more from what Jesus did in his ministry on earth. But it builds our faith, it builds our hope and our joy in knowing that even greater things are coming for all of us who love Jesus Christ and who seek him through his holy word. And so this video, this little rant of mine, kind of only serves to testify to you that the Bible is incredible. The words of God are life. All of these Holy Spirit breathed words found in our Bible build our faith and it should be all of our treasure. One of the saddest things to see what's happening here in these times is watching so many not read their Bible. As they give heed to fables, they turn away from the doctrine and put their hope and trust in false teachers and false prophets who manufacture fake stories as they try to take the glory which belongs only to Jesus Christ and place it upon themselves. But I'm here to tell you, or I'm here to plead with you, read your Bible, seek our God through his written word, pray always and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Spend time in prayer and fellowship with Jesus and read these amazing stories and this amazing doctrine in our Holy Bible. Come back to the truth of Jesus Christ. It is enough. And right now I say glory to God in the highest and praise 
the holy name of Jesus Christ for his holy word. What a gift our Bibles should be to all of us. What an unspeakable gift.